It's the 4th of May 2022. It's good weather, a good growth, a bit cold in the morning here in Ireland. This is Russia Ukraine uh, 43X media fake, media and fake, and the way they're controlling our minds. Now, my markers are gone a bit run out, so uh, you'll have to bear with me. Uh, the, the, the prompts here are really to remind me you not be able to read them. Don't worry about it. Now, Facebook banned me for 30 days, and I'm back about five days and every time i go to post or like something i'm told that i'm banned for a further day and that i breach community rules so if i have never posted since the ban expired how could i be in breach of community rules because i didn't post anything this is the crowd who ceo mark zuckerberg spent 443 million dollars trying to affect and impact the, the uh, presidential uh, electoral college vote in the state of Wisconsin in the last presidential election, has banned Mr. Trump, effectively banned me. Uh, Vladimir Putin is not banned, nor is Kim Jong too of North Korea. They don't post too much anyway. So uh, the point about all this war in the Ukraine, we know from bitter experience dealing with our government and the left-wing woke cultural Marxist climate change hysterical COVID mad government that uh, they will lie and their media will lie and will do it in various ways. They lie by commission and they lie by omission. A lie by commission is a lie. A lie by omission is also a lie because you fail, you fail to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. We are threatened with nuclear war because a source very close to Vladimir Putin has said they're considering attacking Berlin, Paris and Britain. People can say it's a threat or it's not. Uh, I think Mr. Putin has a bit of a reputation for not issuing idle promises or idle threats. And funny enough, they're picking Donegal, whether it's that Northern Ireland is part of NATO or not, and they're going to flood the whole British Isles, as they call it, in a tsunami. And of course, that would contain nuclear fallout. And that's the situation we're in. I remember in uh, 1963, Charles Mitchell on the RT News telling us that the next day was likely the end of the world. I didn't believe one word of him because there was no sign of it for I was, and it wasn't. But I remember a chap at school crying because he wouldn't get home to see his mother that evening, his mother that evening. So then we had the iodine tablets issued to us about 20 years ago. I don't know, do you know, remember that? There's absolutely nothing being done now about the possibility of a nuclear war. Now, Stalin, in the Second World War, took the food of Ukraine. He grabbed it and beat them and murdered them and took it. And that is not forgotten. If he wanted the food, he could have tried to make some bit of a, a deal or issue out coupons or something. Now, he did nothing. So there's a bad taste among some Ukrainians about that. In 2014, up to 2014, there was a pro-Russian government in there that took over after the Soviet Union, but the Ukrainians did don't want that. They want in with the EU and in with NATO. They want our way of life. And here in Ireland, we have 85% of our population, all Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael, Le uh, Labour, uh, Sinn Féin, and all the left-wing, uh, what do you call them, um, people before profit. We have 85% of the people who are totally opposed to what I am preaching on these videos and what you sometimes like and, and comment in my favour. They don't want to change and they won't change and they're welded to those parties and that won't change. And it's the same in Ukraine. There's this yearning to become part of our way of life with these uh, men competing in women's sports. This old crack and this old climate with Greta Thunberg and all that, that's all they want in the Ukrainian part. The Russians are a bit more pragmatic, and Putin himself has no time for this old codology, and none of it, that I hate. So I'm on, I'm on the same track as him there. But, but anyway, uh, 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 that's what they want. But they had a government which wasn't doing that, and they revolted. But the point is, uh, as best as I can see, and I have to be careful what I say here with YouTube, because I'll be banned again. But the thing is, you can Google videos there on YouTube and see what happened. And what I see, whether I'm taken up right or not, and I know videos can be doctored, is that people, pro-Russian people who were protesting in Kiev and other cities in front of government buildings were set upon by the local, local Ukrainian nationalists and, and those crowds. And they were driven into the building, driven up to the top, and pushed out the top windows to their deaths. 
and the allegation is that the police were told by the government not to intervene. And that is the key. There's that, that the police were told not to help, but also that the media refused to print and publish and tell us that that happened. Most people haven't a clue that that happened. They hear reparations. So what I'm saying to each one of you as viewers is go and research it yourself. I believe there was atrocities committed in all parts of Russia and nothing was done about it and the state did not intervene as it in, North, in the Republic of Ireland when we set up our state in 1922 everyone got protected that was the first thing everyone no matter what where their allegiances lay everyone got protected and it has worked well the law should be there for everybody so uh, that's it uh, so some mentioned very high figures for murder of Russians. As I say, I wasn't there. But do not believe the mainstream Western media. They're all pro-Ukraine now. There's not a word on our television set or our radio from our national broadcasters anywhere about this or setting out the other side. But the, the, the social media uh, videos are there. And I know they can be fixed and I know they can be rigged. But still, there's no smoke without a fire. Why are Ukrainian ministers and governments and Zelensky that's there, the president, not being asked about this? He didn't take power till uh, 19, 19, 2019. Why was he not asked when he addressed the parliament in Dublin? Why has none of these been asked to come to terms and be accountable for this and accept that bad things were done? No, no. It's Putin's gone off his head. He must be mad to do this sort of stuff. Why did no one heed Putin's complaint? Now, Trump was in there for four years, and he didn't seem to heed it much either. But I think he might have, he might have eventually got around to doing that. He tends to be one that listens to those things. And the big question is, where was the United Nations? Where was the United Nations? Well, I'll tell you what they were doing. They were hosting Greta. You have stolen my youth. You have stolen my future. People are dying. We're two old, old clacks down the side. People are dying. That's what they were at. When this was brewing. That's what they were doing. United Nations. My arse. That's what they were doing. Now they're saying Putin is sick and mad. Did they ever listen to him? No. They never listened to him. And they blackened and put Trump out for even, even thinking of negotiating with them. And I am suppressed as a minority here in, in Ireland and the European platform against wind farms have been struggling and trying to get our rights under the law that was promised to us by the EU and we can't get it. We're blocked, we're suppressed and many minorities are suppressed including the native Irish culture that we had and we thought we had and the people fought in the GPO and fought and to keep is being thrown out at the minute and there's nothing we can do nothing and they have their own windmills all over the place and their own baloney and the lights going out and shutting down power, good power stations in Germany and all of this going on this whole mess right Russia was treated as a minority they treated Russia the same as they treat me or anyone else. But he has a red button and a big army and a lot of people have already died. And I am not for one minute saying that what he's doing is right. Particularly his attack on Kiev. I think if he had to maybe just take a bit of the country where these people were and then force some kind of a negotiation uh, it, it would he might have been able to do it tactically a lot better but in order to negotiate you have to have someone with half a brain to negotiate with who have you Ursula von Leyden and Boris Johnson not much better and Simon Coveney oh my god and the other fellow in America Biden Biden senile ha semi-senile rave doting half the time that's who they have that's who the voters wanted. That's who the majority of the voters in the West want. 
Will any negotiations that take place in the future between Russia and, and the West, will any of those negotiations be treated as collusion? If they are not collusion, why was Trump alleged mysterious, phantom, fake, speaking to the Russians, called collusion? That's the fact. It's not only the government, it's the media that are out to condition us for this and are succeeding in it. Yesterday, a couple went to Australia without being vaccinated and they were sent home. They've been sent home. They wanted to visit a family event. Wouldn't you think there'd be some information to them before they got there? You need to be something. Oh no, it's wait till you're just in the trap and then spring it. We have our illegal energy policy. It's pushing pylons and windmills on us. And you want to see how hard it is to fight them. 85% um, of the people you meet on the street are in favour of this. 85% believe he's all wrong, Putin's wrong. They believe everything they're told. That's the fact. But 15 of us left. At the very best, if we put candidates up, we'd get another few, maybe 10 uh, rural conservative TDs, farming rural TDs. That's all we get. But we all can't be wrong. The north of Ireland proved too that they had to afford rights to everybody, including the nationalist population, and that any future settlement up there or anything will have to include rights for the unionist population as well. There's no way out of that. Why not go for it? It's the best way. We all know it's the best way. Why didn't it apply in Ukraine? Was there no one there to see this was brewing up into a head of steam? With him and Ray and on about him being shocked about the nuclear threat. This is the fellow that thinks he can tell us the weather in 50 years' time. And he never even thought this would happen. That's the reality of the situation, folks. And I'm giving out because people have died. Instead of Greta more raving about people are dying. Well, now Greta, they're dying now with bombs and bullets and starving and, and dying of thirst. And what are you going to do about it? Nothing. And what's the media going to do about it? Continue lying. But there's a limit to the lies. Maybe the economy will collapse and that will make them think. And maybe, maybe uh, uh, this will turn nasty. And maybe the West will be drawn in and these snowflakes with their smartphones will have to get a rifle and go out and fight and stab someone else with a bayonet. See how they like that. That's the reality of the world that I try to warn on. And you might as well be talking to the wall. You're wasting your sweetness on the desert air. This is happening before the eyes of intelligent people all over. And it has happened in this case. And the suffering and the death and the hardship and the rotting bodies is evidence to the absolute failure of Western governments and the Western system and the United Nations stuck beyond to New York. Why isn't it in Kabul? Why isn't, is, isn't it in, in Moscow? Stuck beyond to New York where they can get to the opera. Oh, we went to a show on Broadway. Ew. To hell with them. People are dying. And they're dying because the likes of myself and some of my good, my good viewers here are ignored. And because our ordinary friends and neighbours are going out and voting for the creeps that are doing this here in our own Irish country and denying us our rights that were fought so hard for. Folks, that's my view. So sad. So sad. I can't put it any better than that. Give me a thumbs up. If you disagree with me, give me a thumbs down. And don't be afraid to comment whatever way you wish. And I'll try and keep them there and talk to you.